Welcome back. Welcome to episode two of I have no clue how to build a cart, but let's do it anyway. Because uh, we want to beat OTK, don't we? So um, yes, today a uh, bit of boring work to to start, which is going to be stripping the Tony cart that I have. Um, I suspect it's probably not the straightest cart in the world, which is going to be a bit uh, of a complicated when I'm trying to uh, clone the the uh, the yoke points. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's crack on with that, and then later on, hopefully the um, the flatbed that I've ordered will have arrived, and we can go through the design that we're thinking about um, going forward with. Um, initially, my thought was we should do a um, an OTK clone. But the complexity in bending the tubes uh, will probably be a bit too much for now. So um, I'm looking at different design options. Um, and I've spoken to a guy called Ian Williams in um, Australia who has a, a really novel sort of chassis design that removes a lot of the complications with regard to um, bending. So the less bending that I have to do, the better. And especially like if it's more than one bend on a tube, you know, that's that's you know it multiplies the complexity so yeah we're going to look at that later and then I'll go through some of the, the welding gear that I've got uh, brazing gear that I've got um, so anyway we're going to do a little quick quick strip of the OTK and then uh, we can get talking about design work Okay, the cart is now stripped, um, ready to be cleaned because it's a little bit uh, grimy. Um, so that needs to be cleaned up. So I'm going to do that before we put it on the sort of flat metal plate that I'm hoping will be uh, here by the end of this video. Um, so yeah, we've got to give the cart a good clean and yeah, crack on and uh, just talk through some of the design areas that we're going to have to be looking at. And um, yeah, so. Let's give the car clean and uh, let's start talking design. So, rather annoyingly, um, the company that I wanted to buy the flat sheet of metal from, I, I put in the order and they emailed me back and they've told me they don't have any in stock. They're going to see what they can do, see if they they can uh, get their supplier to uh, make some and um, I ordered like a two by two by one meter flat metal plate and uh, it's 10 mil thick and I know it's probably not thick enough but I can't afford anything better than that um, so I know I know really you need it to be sort of um, 20 mil thick so 10 10 millimeters I'm, I'm sort of fingers crossed if it's not perfect I don't mind so um, just just for the purposes of the video uh, this is the flattest thing I could find in the garage which is an old kitchen top um, and I've put my old right cart on it uh, this is like an 89 right cart so it's a bit smaller but I can talk through the sort of some of the fundamentals of the design process that I think I'm gonna use so um, yeah let's take a look and uh, I can draw on this with a pen so that helps a bit so yeah let's let's talk through what we want to do with the chassis design okay so um, first thing you'll notice with this right cart um, is it's got sort of two parallel bars either side um, for our purposes we'll just ignore this um, because on the OTK it's just, it's just one parallel bar here and then you've got the two bars on the engine side so yeah what we'll probably do is I actually have seen people use a sort of kind of wood jigs I guess I guess that's what you'd call it um, I guess for, for cost um, but you sort of probably sacrifice a little on accuracy. So I'll, uh, hopefully when my plate comes, it'll be happy days. But I, I have heard that sometimes they're not perfectly flat. But anyway, um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll probably have some clamps like that where the sort of main areas of the chassis are. Um, so that will, we'll do that for the whole, uh, for the rear end of the, o, the, the OTK cart. That way that I know my engine mount's going to fit and all of the other ancillaries that, that you 
a sort of dependent on the chassis uh, thickness, the, the chassis tube thickness. I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing is like on the OTK, this this strut here, this upright here for the um, fuel tank is all quite a complicated set of bends. So what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll emulate this. I'll just have two straight tubes. They've got a slight kink in them, um, but I'll do that and, and fit like a standard fuel tank. It's just going to make my life so much easier. Well, you know, the whole process here is, is making my life easier. So that's probably what we'll do for the rear end. So it will just be like a, a sort of clone of, of what we have. The front end will be a little bit um, a little bit more interesting. So let's have a look at the front. Okay, so this is the front end of the chassis. I mean, it's the same basic concept of the OTK, so they do cross over. I would use the OTK, but it's a kind of bigger chassis on this little sort of tabletop that I've got. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of this bend here and up to here. That's the complicated part of, of the complicated part of a chassis build, um, because uh, you know even a base level tube bender is like 400, 500 pounds, and I can't afford that. So I've got to go for a lot less complicated route and probably get someone else to bend the tube. Uh, and so if I can have something that's a lot less complicated, it will make my life a lot easier. It's just stuff like this where the tube you're bending on this sort of flat plane, and then you're coming up and you're meeting these points here. Uh, that's quite complicated and if you don't get it right you're putting stress in the chassis and then once you weld it and you take it off the jig it's all going to be uh, not quite right. Another complicated thing is is this sort of um, what you mount your steering column to at the bottom and houses the bearing. That's quite a little uh, nifty bit of machining that has to be done so I've got to think about that. Uh, I'm going to take the chassis off and hopefully I'm going to draw you on this a rough sketch of um, what I'm looking to do. All right, so first off, we're going to have um, probably an outer rail. This don't. An outer rail. That ain't going to work. I tried to draw on it and uh, don't work. Pen don't work. <laughs> so uh, we'll try something else. Okay, so that didn't work. So we're just going to have to use paper, old school, Art Attack style, Neil Buchanan for life. Um, right, so... Uh, you, you know what a traditional chassis looks like, so what I'm hoping to do is essentially all of the tubing uh, will not have to be bent uh, in two different planes, if that makes sense. So they'll only, they'll only be like one, we're only actually looking at bending two tubes. So if I, if I draw it, I'll try and draw it in the best I can, so, uh, so excuse me if it's terrible. So we have the outer rail, um, then we have the engine side rails. Um, and this this outer rail here um, will be where the bend is. So that will bend like that, bend like that. Probably won't pinch so much at the front. Then we have a cross member here. Um, that's sort of where your fuel tank will be here. Yeah, this looks awful. <laughs> Obviously, then you got your your cross member here. Okay, so that'll be that'll be fine. You've got your bearing uh, hangers here and here. There'll be a cross member here. And there'll be some sort of cross member here. And I'll probably weld the uh, the piece that you... Um, I don't know what it's, what it's called. But the bit of machine tubing that you, you put your steering column into. And we'll just have to figure out how to mount the pedals. Um, and of course the brakes will... The brake um, cylinder... Uh, will have to be in line with the brake pedal, so that's a bit of a pain in the uh, pain in the behind to figure out. But as you can see, there's only two bends in this chassis. Oh, oh uh, which is here and here. Now, where the um, where the actual uh, yokes are going to be, well, they're they're obviously going to be elevated here and here, and there'll be two short kind of um, pieces of tubing that will meet them like that and obviously there will be at an angle like that so this is this car with this sort of chassis design was pioneered by I think uh, by a guy called Ian Williams I think I mentioned him in this video or the last video uh, the scorpion car and um, it's, a, it's a very sort of it's a it's a good chassis design for me because it requires no weird bends okay so I can get this done pretty simply I'd rather do it myself but of course 
uh, to get a, a tube bender that doesn't cost 400 quid and doesn't crush the actual tubing is, is incredibly difficult. So this is kind of the design that I want to do. Um, and yeah, wicked. I'm going to sign that. Get that on eBay. Right. So let's talk through some of the stuff that I've actually bought and uh, can almost use. So this is all this all isn't in hypothetical land. Um, so first of all, uh, one of the main things that I wanted to get right uh, was uh, respiration. I see a lot of guys welding, particularly gas welding, and they're all no masks, nothing. So um, I'm kind of like nah, that I don't really want to be breathing in whatever is being uh, melted. So I got myself. Uh, a 3M respirator, pretty solid. Um, that'll do the job. Probably has secondary uses in uh, today's today's world as well, so that's probably you know good. Standard welding goggles. Um, don't want to go blind. And um, what else did I get? My welding gear. Let's take a look at that. So tubes. We've got our. Uh, Gas torch. Um, what's this? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'll figure that out. Don't blow myself up. And then, what else do we have? Another tube. Uh, okay. That's to light your gas torch. This is all enthralling information, but I want to show you every step. Your different tips for the torch. Uh, and then uh, this is your sort of blowback regulators. I'm guessing it must be like a kind of valve to stop any sort of um, ignition going back into your fuel tank and exploding, which be, would be less than ideal. This, I haven't looked at this yet. This is the gas regulator uh, that you fit onto the big canister. There you go, lovely. Um, hoping that's all solid and well made. Again, don't really fancy blowing myself up. So that's that. Okay, here's the last thing that I got. Um, this is a tube notch. I actually haven't taken this out of its packet yet, so I don't really know how it works yet properly. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> how does it work? It's not the most expensive thing in the world, so... Um, I'm guessing. Uh, no, let's have a look. Let's have a look, lads. And lasses. Yeah, so you put your, I don't know what you'd call it, your saw thing here. Um, this comes loose. Got a nice sort of tube notcher angle. Measurement thing, put a tube in there, saw on there, you get your drill, and I think, yeah, that just goes and you push down and it notches the tube. So I've just got to find somewhere to mount it, I guess. Um, yeah, so there you go. Well, I hope that all makes sense. Um, yeah, hopefully by the next video we'll have the metal plates sorted and uh, I can get welding stuff. Um, yeah, but the, the process is coming along. We're just getting there, little dribs and drabs, waiting for orders to come through and then uh, we can get cracking and um, get this car built. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that nonsense. And uh, yeah, thanks to all the Patreons and, and everyone who's donated on PayPal because... This is what helps uh, keep this project moving forward. So all the details are below the video if you want to donate or sign up to Patreon. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.